Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Advent lessons and carols at St. John's Church. When we were thinking of doing something like this because of the pandemic, normally we get to enjoy the beauty of the music of this season when we come to Mass during Advent and during Christmas. Sadly, we can't really do that because singing has become a weapon of mass destruction, if you will with the way that you projected everything. But we found a way that we can gather and still rejoice and still enjoy the beautiful music of this season. I think for myself, although Christmas music has so much fondness, right? We look forward to that and we hear it on the radio. And But sometimes we can forget that there's a lot of beautiful Advent music within our church. I don't think it gets enough attention. So tonight is going to be about that music, about remembering that we are still in the season of Advent, that we are, in a sense, waiting, waiting for the coming of Christ, waiting for our King who was born in a stable. So just as a quick reminder, we do have a program on our website that you can access. Don't feel the need if you're sitting there and thinking, oh no, I don't have my program, that's fine. The program only has the readings in it. So if you're attentive, then you'll be able to hear the readings. The lyrics for the songs for the group hymns will be displayed on your screen. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, so please enjoy. Uh, I thank everyone who made this possible and enjoy the richness of our music. We will begin with probably the most famous Advent piece, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. When King David was settled in his palace, 
and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side. He said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of your flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. A just savior is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow will be banished, and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion will be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth.
The wilderness and parched land will exult. The Arabah will rejoice and bloom. Like the rose, it shall bloom abundantly and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of, Car of Carmel and Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord the splendor of our God. Strengthen hands that are feeble. Make firm knees that are weak. Say to the fearful of hearts, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, he comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall see, and the ears of the deaf will be opened. Then the lame shall leap like a stag, and the mute tongue sing for joy. For waters will burst forth in the wilderness, and streams in the Arabah. The burning sands will become pools on the thirsty ground, springs of water. The abode where jackals crouch will be a marsh for the reed and the papyrus. A highway will be there called the Holy Way. No one unclean may pass over it, but it will be for his people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray onto it. The lion shall be there nor any beast of prey approach, nor be found. But there the redeemed shall walk, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They meet with joy and gladness, sorrow and mourning flee away.
The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahai answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now I am sending my messenger. He will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will come suddenly to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. See, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand firm when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire, like fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the Levites, refining them like gold or silver, that they may bring offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in ancient days. 
as in years gone by. On that day, this song shall be sung in the land of Judah. A strong city have we. He sets up victory as our walls and ramparts. Open up the gates that a righteous nation may enter, one that keeps faith. With firm purpose, you maintain peace in peace because of our trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. The way of the just is smooth, the path of the just you make level. The course of your judgments, Lord, we await. Your name and your memory are the desire of our souls. My soul yearns for you at night. Yes, my spirit within me seeks you at dawn. When your judgment comes upon the earth, the world's inhabitants learn justice. Lord, you will decree peace for us, for you have accomplished all we have done. Awake and sing, you who lie in the dust, for your dew is a dew of light, and you cause the land of shade to give birth.
before we move to our conclusion. How about a round of applause for our lectors, for our singers, for everyone involved. You can clap for yourselves because there's no one else here. I'm certain that everyone's clapping at home. So it takes a lot of time and coordination to put something like this together. And we have two somethings, one tonight and one tomorrow. So I hope that you'll be back with us tomorrow evening for our Christmas program. Apparently, when you're a priest, you can make things happen that you want to happen. The final hymn for this evening is one of my personal favorites. It's not one that gets sung very often, though, because, well, it's one of the German hymns that's really hard to sing. It kind of goes all over the place. It's not easy to read. Wake, awake, and sleep no longer. And I've not seen very many parishes sing it, because, well, it's not the easiest thing to follow. But it's one of my favorites because I think it catches in the tone and in the story, one, what we are going through right now, and two, a very deep truth about Christ's coming. You see, it reminds us and it hearkens to the story in the Gospels about the parable of the wise maidens who are instructed to wait up with their lamps lit for the master's return. And they wait and they wait and at midnight there's a cry. The master has come. And the wise maidens are ready. They have their lamps lit. I think how appropriate it is that in our tradition on Christmas, Midnight Mass is the day, is when we celebrate the coming of our Lord. Because it connect, it's connected to that story. At midnight, the Master arrives, just as he does on Christmas night. And so on the one hand, you get this sense that we don't know when God is going to act. We don't know when God is going to respond, when he is going to do what it is he has promised to do. All of these readings we would heard this evening, most of them come from centuries before Jesus. And the people were waiting for a very long time for their Messiah. In a certain sense, we also wait because Christ, prom Christ promises us to come again soon. 2,000 years later, we're still waiting. When exactly is soon? But that's what we're called to do, is to wait. But on the other hand, we're not just waiting. We are called to wait and prepare. Just as those maidens had to be ready with the oil we have to be ready as well for his coming, for we'll come at a moment when we do not expect. And so this hymn, Wake, Awake, and Sleep No Longer, is a reminder to us that when we become complacent, and when we can kind of just think, well, God promised that he would come. He promised that he would take care of me. He promised that he would do these things, that he has good things to give each and every one of us. And in our complacency, we forget that. We just sort of go about our day, and if we're not careful, we'll miss it. And so we are called to wake and sleep no longer. To remain awake, steadfast, trusting that in God's time he will come. We can't make that happen ourselves. We cannot make it happen any sooner. But we can be ready. And one of the ways we are ready is just as it said in that last reading, awake and sing. You who lie in the dust. 
For you caused the land of shades to give birth. God makes new life possible where it seems impossible. And so all we have to do is wait. But how do we wait? We wait ready. And so as we stand and we sing these words, let us imagine ourselves waiting for the Master's return, knowing that He will come, that He's worth waiting for. And let us sing to remind ourselves to stay awake. <laughs>